Kyle here with Team Align. I've got a T-Rex 700 EV2 F3C version here behind me that we're going to do a build video on. Pretty excited to build it actually. It's a flybard helicopter which I haven't seen for about three years. For those of you that are just getting into the hobby, uh, this will be totally different for you. Most of you are probably used to a flybarless helicopter. So at this point you can sit back, enjoy, and gain a little bit of insight as to what the T-Rex 700E consists of. So your 700E kit is going to come with your three 610 digital cyclic servos, a 650 tail rotor servo, 700MX brushless motor, which is a lower KV than what you'll find in the, uh, the 3D kit. This one's a 470 KV motor. You've got your GP900 heading lock tail gyro, a Castle Creations uh, ICE 120 HV V2 speed control, your BEC, and a set of 700mm Align F3C main blades. Opening the box, you'll find the typical line packaging. We've got our canopy box, which is of course going to have our canopy, our side frame components, skids, and whatnot. The main blades are going to have your 700mm F3C main blades, two tail booms. One is aluminum and one is an aluminum wrapped in carbon boom. You'll also find your torque tube tail boom supports in there. Uh, your servos, gyro, BEC, and uh, ESC are going to be in this box here. And the main rotor head set is going to have uh, obviously your main rotor head and your control system components in it. First thing to take note of here in comparison to other line kits is that nothing is pre-assembled. So you've got your grip with one radial bearing installed already. We've got our thrust bearings, thrust washers, and our damper spacers along with our grip posts. First thing I need to do is apply a little bit of grease to these thrust bearings, install those followed by the thrust washer, and then our radial bearing. What we're going to do is install one grip, one damper, uh, one anti-rotation spacer for the spindle all into the head block through one side and then install the other through the other side. Very important that when you're going through this whole build procedure you use Loctite on everything either red or blue. I'm going to put a little bit of red Loctite on these spindle bolts keep in mind that that's what's holding your main rotor grip to the main rotor hub. So I'm going to go through that and we'll come back here and then install our fly bar carrier and fly bar. Okay, so here you can see the rotor, the main rotor grips bolted through by the spindle into our main rotor hub. One thing I wasn't overly clear about previously was the little black spacers that were installed into the main rotor hub before the red dampers were. All those are is a lead lag guide for the spindle. It allows the spindle to teeter on this axis here to allow you to have your damping, but doesn't allow it to lead lag this way. The plastic spacers are indexed in such a way that it's impossible to mess them up. So just make sure those are installed before you install your dampers. Moving forward, we're going to install our fly bar carrier, our fly bar control horns, and the control balls up here on the mixers. Okay, with our rotor head completed over here to the right, we can go ahead and assemble our washout base with the washout arms and our swash plate. All we need to do with the swash plate is remove the control balls, put them back in with some red Loctite or blue Loctite if you choose, and the same thing basically with the washout base and the washout control arms. You need to make sure that you install the swash plate and the washout base onto the main shaft before you put the rotor head onto it. The way the T-Rex works is this little lip machined here onto the shaft prevents the main shaft from pushing through the helicopter. So if you go ahead and install your rotor head first, there's no way you're going to get your swash plate and washout base over the main shaft back over that lip. The first thing the instructions want you to do is assemble the base plate. The base plate is directional. This little notch in the front is forward. Our boom brace here goes in the back, our tail boom support brace. And I'm going to mount this to the skid so that when we build the two halves of the side frames, it's got something to sit on. It'll just be a little bit easier to work with. So I'm going to 
bolt all these parts together to this base plate, have it sitting on skids, and then we'll come back and visit the main side frame assembly. I'm going to build one side frame half up so you can see exactly what it consists of and then lay the other one over top of it. So I'm going to bolt this to the skid frame so it's got something to stand on and then piece by piece we'll build it up. Each bearing block is directional so you need to make sure that you install them correctly. The top main shaft bearing block, the bearing presses in from the top, so the lip of the main shaft pulls that bearing into the bearing block ensuring that it doesn't come out. The bottom one is reversed. The bottom bearing goes into the bottom of the bearing block, so when the main gear is sitting on the bottom, it pulls up and pushes that bearing into the bearing block. If you have those reversed, the bearings will come out of the bearing box in flight. Same goes for your pinion bearing block right here. You want the pinion to push that bearing further into the bearing block. If you flip that around, your pinion will end up rubbing on the bearing block and pushing the bearing out through the other side. So just be aware that those are directional and pay attention when you install them, you'll be alright. Next we can install the other half of the side frame and move forward with installing the electronics tray in the front and the tail rotor transmission box here in the back. We can now mount the motor to the motor mount. The motor mount is going to sit in the frames with a frame half here and a frame half here. So you want to position your motor on the motor mount in a way that the wires don't interfere with the side frame. You've got four choices to mount it on this mount. The best way that I've found is at an angle running to the back right hand side of the frames. That way these bullet connectors will line up nice with your speed control which will be right behind the main shaft. Right here on the side frames you can see we've got a hole cut out and that's there to access the set screw that holds the pinion to the motor shaft. So you can adjust the height of the pinion once you've got the motor mounted into the frame of the helicopter. You want the height set so that there's a small gap in between the inner race of this bearing and the bottom of the pinion. In front of us we've got our two aileron bell cranks, if we can call them that, or our roll cyclic bell cranks our elevator or our four aft bell crank and A-arm which also serves as the anti-rotation for the non-rotating part of the swash plate. We've got our control balls here which we're going to bolt on to our aileron or roll bell cranks here and a bunch of shims of various sizes. And what you're going to do with those shims is position them on the outboard part of this, this through cross shaft that supports everything, the entire control system, until you've got no slop. So if you put it all together and you find that you've got a little bit of in and out play, you add shims as required until there's no play at all. You don't want to add so many shims that the bearings get notchy, so it's going to be a little bit of trial and error, but once you get it, it'll be absolutely perfect. Just to clarify what I said earlier about the shims being outboard on the control shaft, by outboard I mean outside of the aluminum spacer that pushes the bell crank away from the side frame, not outboard of the bell crank itself. So you need to install your aluminum spacer, as many washers or shims as you need to remove any in and out play this way, followed by your bell crank and then the bolt.
Um, to assemble this part of the build, we need our two tail boom supports, the tail boom, our torque tube, which is going to be supported by two bearings housed in a rubber sleeve. The sleeve is what's going to center the torque tube in the tail boom, and to push the rubber sleeves through the tail boom, you'll want to lube them up a little bit with uh, some WD-40, some LPS, or even the clear silicone line grease that comes with the kit. To install the tail boom, we need our four main clamping bolts loose, obviously, but we also need the two aft bolts that hold the tail rotor case into the frame loose as well. Those do provide a little bit of clamping for the tail boom. You can get it in with them tight, but it's going to be a struggle. Also, we need to keep the anti-rotation pin, which is just a four millimeter bolt, out from this hole here so that we can visually see that the hole of the tail boom is lined up with the hole in this case, indicating that Number one, we're not going to crush the tail boom when we install the pin, and number two, that the torque tube is fully engaged with the uh, bevel gear inside that tail case. When it comes time to bolt your boom supports to the fin bracket, make sure that you've got the bracket loose enough so you can slide the tail fin back and forth. Then install both boom supports and get them tight before you clamp down the tail fin mount. That way you guarantee you're not going to put any preload on the boom supports and it also gives you a chance to get your fin perfectly level. The three shims that we have here, four actually, I've already got one installed onto the main shaft are there to take away the up and down slop once you install the main shaft into the two bearing blocks. So you throw a shim on your main shaft and then do a trial fit, put it into the main frame of the helicopter. Once you've got it into the helicopter you can install your lower main shaft bolt and when that's in pull up and down on the rotor head and see if you have any up and down play. If this bolt doesn't go in easily or doesn't go in at all, your shim is too thick. If it goes in easily and you've got a little bit of up and down play, then your shim is too thin. So you just need to try a couple different thicknesses until you get it perfect. Mine ended up using the thinnest shim available in the kit. Um, so I'm going to bolt that on and then we're going to move on to the next step. Here are the F3C style 700mm main blades and the 105mm tail blades that come with the kit. Um, just in case you guys didn't know, you can see here that the blades are serialized, both the tail blades and the main blades, which makes it very easy to identify what blade goes with what blade. If you've got multiple sets or multiple helicopters, there's blades laying around the house, they're in the car when you're traveling, you don't have to worry about mixing and matching uh, different sets. So as long as you match these two numbers up, you're good to go. You don't have to use a permanent marker or a set of stickers or whatever to... Uh, identify what blades go with what. Here we have the canopy, our four grommets, and our four plastic canopy protectors. The manual suggests that the canopy protectors go in from the top like that. I think it looks a little bit neater and tidier to glue them in from the back. So all you have to do is apply a little bit of CA glue to hold them in place. Once the CA glue is dry, you can install the grommet through that plastic spacer. And all that plastic is there for us to protect the fiberglass around the canopy. All right, here's the completed build of the F3C Align TRX 700 V2. I hope you found the build video informative.